Here we are again in West Virginia. Welcome everyone. Hope you're doing well. So it's time for joke of the day because that is the best part of the day. Well, this invisible man married an invisible woman and their kids were nothing to look at either. All right, but you know what? Dividing polynomials is not invisible. So let's take a look at that. We looked at several laws of exponents, and one of the laws of exponents said that whenever you um, multiply the bases and the bases are the same, that means that you add those exponents. You keep the base because it's all about the base, about the base, and you add up those exponents. That's not showing up really well, so let me try that again. I'm going to say a b to the m and a b to the n being multiplied together results in a b to the m plus n. So in other words, when the bases are the same and you're multiplying those bases, you add up those exponents. Now, let's take a look at a different scenario here. I want to first ask, what does 2 to the 5th divided by 2 to the 3rd mean? Now, what I'm asking is, this numerator that says 2 to the 5th, what exactly does that mean? And you know that means five twos being multiplied together. So in other words, a two times a two times a two times another two times one more two all on that numerator. Five twos being multiplied on the numerator. So two to the third in the denominator would indicate three twos being multiplied on that denominator. One, two, and another one, three. Now, my next question is, What's going to happen right here with this 2 divided by 2? Well, you know that 2 divided by 2 is 1, so in other words, they cancel out to be a 1. And the same thing is going to happen right here, because 2 divided by 2 is yet again a 1. They're going to cancel to be a 1. And the same thing is going to happen right here. They're going to cancel. So I'm left with two twos being multiplied together. So that's going to indicate two twos being multiplied together. And the shortcut way of writing that is 2 to the second power. Now we know 2 to the second power means 2 times 2, so that would indicate 4. But I'm, what I'm really interested about is right here. In other words, how do I go in one step from here to here? Because what if this was a 55 and that was a 33? I don't want to write out 55 of these 2's and then 33 of these 2's and start cancel, 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 cancel. That'll take entirely too much time. So I need a shortcut, one quick step that will get me from here to here. And what do you notice? Exactly. Very similar to what we saw right here that said, okay, when I multiply the bases and the bases are the same, then I keep that base. Well, similar idea right here. Yes, I'm dividing those bases, but the idea is that the base is the same. So when the base is the same, I'm going to keep that base. And notice how do I combine a 5 and a 3 to get a 2? You're exactly right. I'm going to subtract those exponents. So in other words, when you are dividing the bases and the bases are the same, what you do is you subtract the exponents. Now there's a particular order in which we need to subtract those exponents because 5 minus 3 will give me a 2, but 3 minus 5 will give me what? Yes, 3 minus 5 will give me a negative 2. And there is a huge difference between a positive 2 and a negative 2. You know that. So in other words, I need to do that subtraction top minus bottom. So let me write that down. Subtract those exponents top minus bottom. And that is what we call the quotient property. The quotient property says when I'm dividing these bases and the bases are the same, I'm going to keep that base because it's all about the base, about the base. And I'm going to subtract those exponents top minus bottom. So I'll have an M minus an N. And this is our quotient property. Now a lot of people get the, the, um, the uh, product property confused with the quotient property. The product property says when I multiply the bases, I add the exponents. The quotient property is the reverse of that. So in other words, the opposite of multiplication is division. So the opposite of addition would be subtraction. And that helps us to keep our laws of exponents straight. So in other words, loosely said, if you know one of them, you kind of have the other one memorized because they're just opposites of each other. So let's take this quotient property and let's actually use it. 
So I've got four examples sitting here, and in each of these examples it says I want to simplify them. Well, notice in the first example I have m to the 12th divided by an m to the 6th. The bases are the same. So that tells me I'm going to keep that base because it's all about the base, about the base, and I'm going to subtract those exponents, and remember, top minus bottom. So I'll do a 12 minus a 6, and 12 minus 6 will give me a 6, and that's the end of that one. Notice here in this case, I did come up with a 4, but that's because I can take a 2 squared, and I know that means 2 times 2, and I know that 2 times 2 is 4, but here I don't know what that m is, so I can't take it any further. I'm stuck with just my m to the 6. Now, let's take a look at the next one. Notice that it says a negative 3 to the 6 divided by another negative 3 to the 3rd. What a lot of people do in this one is a couple of things. One, they make it way more harder than what it needs to be. In other words, they'll take a calculator and they'll punch in there a negative 3 to the 6, get this great big huge number. They'll punch in their calculator negative 3 to the 3rd, get another fairly large number. They'll take the number on that numerator and divide it by that number on the denominator. But you are making this way, way harder than what it needs to be. Because notice here I have the same base. Now be very careful because what a lot of people do is they'll try to cancel out those negative 3's and they'll try to call it just simply a 1 to the 6 minus 3 and they'll say that's a 1 to the 3rd and then they'll say that means 1 times 1 times 1 which is just a 1. However, recall that your quotient property said when the bases are the same you keep that base because it's all about the base, about the base. So I'm going to keep that base of negative 3, and then yes, I am going to subtract those exponents because it is the quotient property, and I will do top minus bottom. So a 6 minus a 3 will definitely give me a 3, but notice that my base is not a 1, my base is a negative 3. Now this does indicate a negative 3 times a negative 3 times a negative 3, and we can do that because we know negative 3 times negative 3 is a positive 9, positive 9 times negative 3 is going to be a negative 27. So we can take that and we can actually evaluate it and we can come up with a negative 27 in the end as opposed to our m to the 6. Let me write this up here so that we can see it a little bit better and I'm going to get a negative 27 in the end. Definitely not this negative or positive 1 because I cannot cancel out these bases. That is definitely not what happened here. I did not cancel out the b's to call it a 1. I kept the base because it's all about the base, about the base. Now notice here in this one, what a lot of people do is they get excited and they go, oh yeah, 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 I'm going to subtract because it's division. And so then what they'll do is they'll subtract 12 minus 3 and they'll get a 9. And then they'll take these bases and keep that base and they'll subtract those exponents, 7 minus 2, and they'll get a 5. So they'll call it a 9x to the 5th. And they actually do get excited about this because they go, I got this. I know what the quotient property says. But recall, yes, this is a division problem. And when you're dividing same bases, you subtract the exponents. But these are not same bases. Those are just coefficients is all they are. So yes, you do subtract the exponents when you're dividing bases. But here I'm dividing coefficients. It's just a division problem. So 12 divided by 3 is actually a 4 because it is a division problem. It just happens that when I divide the bases, I keep the base and I subtract those exponents. So yes, I will subtract 7 minus 2 and get a 5. However, my coefficient is not going to be a 9. My coefficient is going to be a 4. All right, one more and then we'll take a look at another laws of exponents. In this one, remember, yes, I'm going to subtract those exponents, but only when it's the same base. So I can only subtract the exponents on these x's, and then I can subtract the exponents on the y's. So when I do the exponents on the x's, I'll keep that base of x, because it's all about the base, about the base, and then I'll subtract a 200 minus a 25. And then when I do those y's, again, I'll keep that base, because it's all about the base, about the base, and then I'll subtract top minus bottom, 40 minus 10. Well, a 200 minus 25 will be a 175, and then a 40 minus 10 will be a 30. So I get an x to the 175 times a y to the 30. And there's nothing more that I could do with that because I don't know what this x is and I don't know what that y is. So this is what happens when you divide the bases. Again, very similar to our product property. 
that says when we multiply bases, keep the base because it's all about the base, about the base, and add the exponents. And so because division is the opposite of multiplication, we will do the opposite of addition and we'll subtract. So when we divide those bases, keep the base again and subtract the exponents top minus bottom. Now let's take a look at another of our laws of exponents. And this is what we call the zero exponent property. And in order to understand the zero exponent property, we need to understand what 2 to the third divided by 2 to the third means. Now remember, 2 to the third on that numerator is going to indicate 2 times 2 times one more 2. And then 2 to the third on the denominator is going to indicate another 2 times 2 times 2. And we discussed before, we said, now wait a minute, these 2's right here, 2 divided by 2, will cancel to be a what? A 1. Not a 0, but a 1. So these will cancel to be a 1. These will cancel to be a 1. These as well will cancel to be a 1. So the result of that is just a 1. Also, notice that before, when we just did that quotient property, the quotient property said when I divide the bases and the bases are the same, I subtract those exponents. So my quotient property said what's going to happen is I'm going to keep that base because it's all about the base, about the base. I'm going to subtract those exponents, top minus bottom, so that will be a 3 minus 3, and 3 minus 3 is a 0. So what this tells me is, Anything at all to the zero property is going to be a 1. Not a zero, but a 1. And this is my zero exponent property that says right here, anything at all to the zero power is a 1. So take a look at these four examples that I've got right here. This one, notice it's 10 to the zero, and we just said anything to the zero power is 1, so this is just going to be a 1. Now notice that this one says a negative 10 to the 0 power, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my hand over top of what's inside the parentheses because right now I kind of don't care what's inside the parentheses. It is parentheses to the 0 power. And again, anything to the 0 power is going to be a 1. So if it's parentheses to the 0 power, it's just going to be a 1. Now, notice the difference between these two. They are very, very similar. But there is a major difference between the two. And what is that difference? Absolutely. This one has a parenthesis. This one does not. So if it has a parenthesis, what that indicates is whatever's inside that parenthesis, I kind of don't care what it is, raise it to the zero power and I'm going to get a one as opposed to what happens here. This one indicates do that zero property right there and then just change the sign of whatever you got. So when I do 10 to the zero, prop, 0 power, I get a 1, but I'm going to take that 1 and I'm going to change its sign. So in other words, when I do 10 to the 0 power and I get a 1, now I need to change its sign and I get a negative 1 out of that. And that's the difference between the two. Now, notice this one. A whole bunch of stuff inside that parentheses. And yet again, I kind of don't care what's inside the parentheses. So I'm going to put my hand over top of it and I'm going to say parentheses to the zero power indicates a 1 because anything to the zero power is going to be a 1 unless I see something like this that says do that part and change the sign of it. So this then, because it's the entire parentheses to the zero power, is just going to indicate a 1. So that's what our zero, pro zero exponent property says. Anything at all to the zero power is a 1. So let's take a look at one more of our laws of exponents. We've got a total of seven, and so far I believe we have looked at five. No, we've looked at, this will be our sixth one right here. So notice this says, what does two-fifths raised to the third power mean? Now notice, inside the parentheses is a fraction, but what's happening is we're taking the entire parentheses, raising it to the third. So if I take the entire parentheses and raise it to the third, then that's going to mean take that two-fifths, multiply it by another two-fifths, multiply it by yet one more two-fifths. And you know how to multiply fractions. We've talked about that before. There's that gang symbol that says cancel on those diagonals, cancel up and down, and then shoot straight across. So when I try to cancel on these diagonals, nothing will cancel. When I try to cancel on these diagonals, nothing will cancel. Nothing will cancel here. Nothing will cancel here. Nothing will cancel way across here. 
and nothing will cancel way across here. So nothing cancels at all, and nothing cancels up and down here, here, or here. So I'm ready to shoot straight across. So when I shoot across, and I do 2 times 2 times 2, that's basically 2 to the third power. When I do 5 times 5 times 5, that's basically 5 to the third power. Now 2 to the third power indicates 2 times 2 times 2, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, and 5 to the third power indicates 5 times 5 times 5, 5 times 5 is 25, 25 times 5 is a 125. And that's all well and good, but here's my main concern. In one step, I want to be able to go from here to here without having to write all this out. Because what if that's a 33? I do not want to write out 33 of these fractions being multiplied together. So I need one quick step to go from here to here, and hopefully you're noticing it's very similar to my all-time favorite property. And recall, my all-time favorite property said, when I take a, a product and I raise it to a power, remember that one? It said, I'm going to distribute the power through that parentheses to every factor that's inside. And I'll get an A to the N and a B to the N. That is my power of a product property. Very similar. It just simply says, okay, let's take this exponent. Let's distribute the power one more time. So I'm going to distribute it to the numerator and to the denominator. So I'll distribute it to the numerator and get 2 to the 3rd, and down to the denominator and get 5 to the 3rd. So yes, my power of a quotient property simply says, when I have a quotient and I raise it to a power, you're absolutely right, I'm going to distribute the power one more time, a to the n, b to the n. And that is my power of a quotient property. And it simply says, let's sing it again, loud and proud, distribute the power all the way through the parentheses. So, let's take a look at a few examples of this one. And bear with me a minute while I clean this board up, enjoy the, the scenery of the great expanse of the universe that's behind me. Makes me feel very mathematical. All right. So, like I said, let me take a look at it few examples of this one. Let me get my new numbering system set up correctly here. Examples. And we are going to simplify each. And I've got three examples that we're going to look at. So let's start with a four-fifths raised to the fourth power. And recall that what this is telling me is take that fraction and raise it to the fourth power. And what we just discovered is that could mean four-fifths times four-fifths times four-fifths times four-fifths. But what would be easier to do would be simply to distribute the power to the numerator and to the denominator. So I'll get a four to the fourth, and I'll get a five to the fourth. Now four to the fourth means four times four times four times four. 4 times 4 is 16, 16 times 4 is 64, and 64 times 1 more 4 is a 256. 5 to the 4th, 5 times 5 times 5 times 5, well 5 times 5 is 25, 25 times 5 is 125, and 125 times 5 is going to be a 625. And there's my answer. Alright, let's try another one. And let's take a negative x over 6 to the third power, and we're going to evaluate or simplify that one. So yet again, remember, I'm going to distribute the power to the numerator and the denominator. The problem is this negative that sits out front. You can look at it a couple of ways. You can look at it as a negative times a negative times a negative, or you could take that negative, you could slip it up to the numerator, or you could slip it down to the denominator. Any of those ways that you want to handle it are perfectly fine. Now what most people like to do is they like to slip that negative up to that numerator. I'm going to go with what most people do. And then at this point they go ahead and go, all right, sing your silly song. I'm going to distribute the power to the numerator and to the denominator. So that will indicate a negative x to the third on the numerator and a 6 to the third on the denominator. Now that negative x to the third means a negative x times a negative x times a negative x. Negative times negative times negative, an odd number of negatives gives me a negative, and x to the third is simply an x to the third. Now, 6 to the third indicates 6 times 6 times 6, 
6 times 6 is 36, and 36 times 6 is going to be a 216, and that is simplified. Recall the negative can sit on the numerator, it can sit on the denominator if you really want it to, but nobody usually does that, or it can sit out front, any of those is perfectly fine. Alright, let's take a look at one more of these, just to make sure we're very good at this. I've got an x to the third, y to the second divided by a 2z, I always put a line through my z so they don't look like 2's, and I'm going to raise that to the fourth power. Now recall that my power of a quotient property says distribute the power to every single factor that's inside. Every single factor that's inside. So I'm going to distribute my 4 to here, to here, all the way down to here, and all the way down to the here. So that means that my x to the third will get, whoops, forgot my 3 in there. It'll get raised to the fourth power. My y squared will also get raised to the fourth power. My 2 will get raised to the fourth power. And my z will get raised to the fourth power. Now z to the fourth is perfectly fine. There's nothing I can do with that. Here, though, remember my power of a power property. My power of a power property said when you take a power and raise it to a power, Remember, that 4 being right up against that parentheses. When things are right up against each other, that indicates multiplication. So I'm going to multiply those exponents. So 3 times 4 will give me 12. So I get an x to the 12th. And then here, same idea. 4 right up against that parentheses indicates multiplication. 2 times 4 will give me 8. So I get an y to the 8th. Down here, 2 to the 4th means 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 2 is 16. And then my z to the 4th will just remain. And there's nothing more that I can do there because even though this is a division problem, remember, I can only subtract those exponents when the bases are the same. None of these bases are the same, so that's as good as that one will get. All right, so what I want to do now is I want to put all these properties together and see what happens when... We combine our zero exponent property with our power of a quotient property with our basic quotient property. And I've got two examples of this. So yet again, bear with me and enjoy the vast expanse of outer space while I clean up this board. And let's take a look here at some more examples. And in each one of these, we are going to simplify. So in my first example, I have a 4a to the 8th, b to the 3rd, c squared. It's going to be divided by a negative 28, a to the 5th, b to the 6th, no, sorry, negative 6th, c squared. Okay. Now recall, this is a division problem. So yes, with a division problem, you are going to subtract those exponents, top minus bottom, but the coefficients, I'm actually dividing them. Now you could take your 4 and you could divide it by that negative 28, but you're going to get a crazy decimal. Nobody wants to deal with those crazy decimals. Let's just simplify the fraction. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to say, what will go into both 4 and 28? Yes, 4 goes into both. So 4 goes into 4 once and 4 goes into 28 7 times. So I'm left with, I'll put it down here, a 1 on that numerator and a 7 on that denominator. Now this negative can stay down there on that denominator or it can slip up to the numerator or it can sit out front. It really doesn't matter where you put it. Just put it in one and only one place. Because if you put it in the numerator and the denominator, what's going to happen? Absolutely, you're going to get a positive. This is clearly a negative. It's not a positive. So just put it in one place. Again, top, bottom, out front, doesn't really matter. Now, I'm going to deal with these A's <clears throat> because I can only deal with the ones that have the same base. But now that I've identified the same base, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract those exponents top minus bottom because it's a division problem. So top minus bottom, that will be an A to the, an 8 minus 5 will give me a 3. So I have a negative 1, A to the 3rd, over 7. Now let's deal with those B's. Again, only identifying the ones that have the same base. So when I look at those B's, B to the third divided by B to the negative six. Again, I'm going to subtract top minus bottom. 
So that will give me a b to the 3 minus a negative 6. Now recall that subtracting a negative is really adding a positive. So that will be a 3 plus 6. And 3 plus 6 will give me a b to the 9th. And now I'm going to deal with those c's. Again, identifying what's the same base. So c to the 2nd divided by c to the 2nd. A couple of ways of looking at that. One way to look at it is to say, okay, it's a division problem. I'm going to subtract top minus bottom. So that will be a c to the 2 minus 2. And then 2 minus 2 will give me a 0. But recall, anything to the 0 power is a 1. So this factor right here is just 1, and I wouldn't need to show that. The other way to look at it is to say, well, no, wait a minute. When these factors are the same, they will cancel each other out because they are the same. C to the second, C to the second, it's exactly the same thing. So they will cancel out to be a 1. Either way you want to look at it is perfectly fine. But notice now that I'm down here, these two are not the same base. I certainly could add the exponents if they were the same base, but they're not. So I am stuck, and that is as good as that one gets. All right, let's try one more like that, just to make sure we are really, really good at this stuff. <clears throat> this is our last example in this video. Like I said, I just want us to get really super good at these things. So here is our second example. We've got a negative 8x to the 12th, y to the 10th z to the fourth divided by a 40 x to the second y to the third z to the second again those are z's they're not just i put a line through them so they won't look like twos and once again it is a division problem so i'm going to divide those coefficients i'm not subtracting them i'm only subtracting when i divide bases so when I do that division problem, I can take an 8, I can divide it by a 40, but I'm going to get a nasty decimal that I don't feel like dealing with. So instead, I'm just going to simplify the fraction. What will go into both an 8 and a 40? Absolutely, an 8. 8 goes into 8 once, 8 goes into 40 five times. So I'm left with a negative 1 on that numerator and a 5 down on that denominator. Now I'm going to deal with those bases, the ones that are alike. So I'm going to deal with those x's. I'm dividing those bases, so I'm going to keep the base because it's all about the base, about the base. And I'm going to subtract those exponents top minus bottom, 12 minus 2. 12 minus 2 will give me a 10, so I have an x to the 10. Once again, that negative 1 on that numerator, and I don't have to show the 1, I definitely have to show that negative, which could sit on the numerator, down on the denominator, or out front, but not both places because recall, both places, numerator and denominator, will make this positive, and it definitely needs to be negative. So now I'm going to deal with the y's, and once again, I'm dividing those bases, so I'm going to subtract the exponents top minus bottom. So I'm going to keep the base, because it's all about the base, about the base, and do top minus bottom. 10 minus 3 will give me a 7, so I get a y to the 7. And then finally, I'm going to deal with those z's. Now on the z's, notice that they don't cancel out this time, because they are different exponents. So one more time, I will do top minus bottom, 4 minus 2, and that will give me a 2, so I get a z squared. None of these are the same base, so there's nothing that I can do any further. I am stuck, and that's as good as that one gets. So hopefully this helps you to understand a few more of your laws of exponents. The quotient property says when you are dividing same bases, subtract those exponents, top minus bottom. You also have your power of a quotient property that says whenever you have a quotient, like a parenthesis, and you're taking the whole fraction and raising it to a power, then you're going to distribute the power one more time. And then don't forget your zero exponent property. Zero exponent property says when you take a power to, or when you take a base to the zero power, it indicates a one. So let me quickly recall um, the laws of exponents that we've got so far. Uh, it's just good for us to kind of summarize it and put it all in one spot. So let me write these down one more time. We've got our, our product property that says when I multiply those bases, remember I'm going to keep the base because it's all about the base, about the base, and I'm going to add up those exponents hand in hand going along with that quotient property because remember division is the opposite of multiplication and so subtraction will be the opposite of addition. 
But recall, I need to do it in a particular order, top minus bottom. And again, these go hand in hand, cutting your memorization in half. Now, we've got my all-time favorite property that says when I have a product and I raise it to a power, remember that means I'm going to distribute the power to every single factor that's inside. So I'll get an A to the N and a B to the N. And that goes hand in hand as well with my power of a quotient property that says, same idea here. I'm taking everything inside the parentheses, raising it to the N power. So once again, I'm going to distribute the power to every single factor that's inside. And I'll get an A to the N and a B to the N. And so these two go hand in hand. Recall as well that if I take a power, as we just saw in that last example, when I take a power and raise it to a power, remember, these two being right up against each other, right up against indicates multiplication. So I'm going to multiply those exponents. And then one more property that we've got, anything at all to the zero power is a one. Now there are a total of seven laws of exponents, and we've got six sitting here. So in the next video, I will demonstrate for you um, what happens when you have a negative in the exponent. And I hope that helps. Have a great day.